What is up, Fight Fans? I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and tonight I have the pleasure of being joined by the man currently sitting at the number five spot on the UFC's flyweight rankings. However, on March 14th in Brasilia, Brazil, he has plans on changing that and putting his name right in the middle of the title conversation when he faces the number three ring, Hussie Formiga. He is the assassin baby himself, Brandon Moreno. Brandon, Mr. Assassin, sir. Thank you for giving me some time <laughs> before this big fight coming up. Brother, thank you for your time. And I say before, I love your toys. <laughs> this is really nice. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm happy. I'm appreciative that you like them. I don't get many compliments on them. I'm glad to finally get <laughs> some compliments on them. Thank you. I thank you. I appreciate you. Now I, I have so many questions for you. Before we we talk about this uh -huh. this fight coming up, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Kai Kaur France win. You know he he was on a serious run since you were both. Uh, on the Ultimate Fighter back then, he had a, a eight a fight win streak. He had won three straight in the UFC. He seemed to be in that tight, getting closer to title conversation and stuff. You did something many people have trouble with, and you pressured him, stayed in his face, beat him up for three rounds. Going into that fight, was that something you knew right away that you could do to him? You know, based on your personal style, based on knowing him for years and what he's done since then. Did you know I can pressure this guy and get all up in his face? Yeah, um, I, I meet Car Kai in the, the Ultimate Fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, that the Ultimate Fighter was in 2016. I remember. I meet her. I meet him there, but I, I don't talk too much with him because my English, my English in that time doesn't really really good. Even right now, it's not really good. Oh, but, it's good. It's good. But I can talk with you, so. <laughs> So it's fine. I think it's fine right now. So, but after the first round in the fight, I saw his eyes, and I and I and I can saw his body language, and I feel like I can well, I can win this fight. You know, mm. I in the last year I evolved too much in my striking. Everybody say Kai has a little a really good power in his right hand. How you say? He he's uh, he came with three three win streak in the UFC, mm -hmm. but I was in the same spot b before the loss with Sergio Perez, so I think it was more my experience and my confidence in that fight, definitely. Now I, I I'm one, I was going to ask about that later, but I'm glad you brought up now the English and and how good your English has gotten because I remember on the Ultra Fighter where you didn't really speak too much and stuff like that. It was hard for you to, to communicate with your roommates stuff like that. <laughs> I admire that learning multiple languages and stuff like that and and how good it is. And I'm sure it's helped you a lot in terms of you know your branding because fighters got to build their brand and their name and everything like that. Like one. Was learning English one of the harder things you've had to do? You know, how, how do you feel like a really good confidence now? How long did it take you to say, okay, I'm confident. I can go to a media day and handle <laughs> all the questions. I'm good. I'm, ex you know, all that stuff. I mean, the, I think the only difference right now, I, I have the confidence to ask, even if I wrong with my words. Mm. So now, now I feel confidence. I mean, the, the problem when I'm starting to, to, to came to the United States and talk with all these people was I had, I had zero English mm. in my, in my words, yeah. but you know, I, I, I was in the development pro program in the, for the UFC in 2014 in Albuquerque, New Mexico with a, with a lot of Mexican guys, mm -hmm. uh, Pantera Rodriguez. Uh, from Ecuador, Chito Vera, my, my partner mm. Teco, uh, and other guys, Guido Canetti, all of, all of us was uh, in New Mexico for training. Mm. And I started to talk, with, talk more uh, English. I started to the, the talk with people who just talk English, and then the ultimate fighter, and then um, start to go to uh, different places for training, you know, uh, Denver, and... Um, Arizona, Las Vegas. So just I'm starting to talk with uh, more in English and, and, it's, and it's fine. Sorry for all the people <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the hotel. My partner <laughs> takes me to today to, uh, to 48. So I'm here in the hotel. So sorry, guys. No problem. <laughs> but 
yeah, I know for my for my brand for for my own own brand, it's amazing because mm-hmm. I have more interviews. Yeah. I have more, uh, you know, like uh, media mm-hmm. uh, put his eye on me. So yeah. that, that's amazing. <laughs> has it taken? Like, do you feel like? I guess in a basic way, like in a money making way, has it really helped in terms of like maybe getting sponsors outside of fighting and making extra money and and doing the media? Has you know, you know, built up your social? Has it made like a big difference for you, <laughs> brother? Brother, not yet, but I, I know, I know. <laughs> after this win against Formiga, I start to make money, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know? now, yeah, for glory or for. For my brand, for my own brand. Do you think, you know, and away from like fans and stuff like that, you know, you've had some really good wins in your career. You know, people may overlook it sometimes, especially from your your first run in the UFC. You know, wins over Dustin Ortiz, Luis Smoko, those are good, real good wins. But do you feel like beating Kai at that particular moment with all the kind of momentum behind him, do you feel like it's brought more attention? Are you getting more interviews, a little bit more attention, you know, because of that win? Or is it because of Formiga, do you feel like? maybe you're getting a little bit more respect and attention because it's such a big fight. Number three versus number five. This is a really big fight. I know. And, and even I'm still the, the underdog in this mm-hmm. final. And I understand because Joseph Formiga is amazing. He has a lot of history in the flyweight division. He fought against the best guys in the world in the flyweight division. So after the, my fight in Mexico City against uh, Oscar, Oscar, uh, mm-hmm. that was a, a draw. Yeah. To be honest, I, I think I won that fight. Everybody's yeah. saying the same. Like, hey, man, I think you won, you won, you won. And, and I feel the same. So everybody expect uh, 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 Brandon Moreno with a lot of uh, hungry win the fight against Kai Car France. And I, I think that fight wasn't a statement. wasn't mm. a statement for my evolution and for what is coming for me. Now for this fight with uh, Jussie in Brazil, this is you know like I mentioned, really big fight. Formiga is an elite fighter, like you mentioned. You know he his only losses are to guys that are former champions or were former contenders. Sahudo, Benavides, Dodson, Ray Borg. The winner of this fight deserves serious consideration for a title opportunity. He's a very good grappler who can grind out decisions, wins. I mean, half of his wins are decisions, more than half, and then the other half are submissions. You know, what makes him, when you've been doing scouting with your team and preparing for, or just watching him over the years from afar, what makes his grappling very tough to deal with? He's very basic with, uh, with his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but, but he's really effective. He mm. uh, throws you down, takes his back, and that's it. He tried to submit to submit to get the real naked choke, but if he, can, but if he can't, he take all the round and won and win for a decision. So I know he's amazing. <laughs> I know he's really good. But first, I, I had experience. I'm young, but I had experience. Mm-hmm. I had really good names, like you say. I have good names in my in my record. So I'm I'm ready, brother. I'm ready. Um, I know this fight uh, came with the, the the contention for the title. Alexander Pantoja is there. He beat me before. Mm-hmm. Beat before. Uh, Dana White talked about the rematch uh, between Figueiredo and Joseph Benavides. But I need to make another statement in March 14. Uh, and Dana White can, be say, can, can say Brandon Moreno is Have the next one. And your team title. gone back to his losses, like I mentioned, against Benavides, against Borg, against these guys, and, and looked at and, and identified the things they did to beat him up. You know, all all three of those guys, like I mentioned, Borg, Cejudo, Benavides, very, very good wrestlers. Can Formiga's grappling be like shut down with good wrestling, or is it much more than that? Is it much more than maybe he has a wrestling weakness? I, I think it's because he. He, he doesn't have the combination between wrestling and Brazilian uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Okay. And I think that is really necessary for yeah. the mixed martial arts, you know? And other thing is, you know what? Is um, All these guys uh, broke his mind. Mm, Do you okay. understand me? Yeah, yeah. Yep. You know? Because just for me, I always try to 
to control the position mm -hmm. and that's it but if he can't control the position his mind starts to be broken mm -hmm. broken broken you know mm -hmm. good good grappler good 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 wrestling uh, Joe Benavides good wrestling and mm -hmm. um, Ray Borg good wrestling mm -hmm. all these guys a lot of scrambles never lost position yep. and I think Joseph Formiga can't support that and that that was the, his loss. I want to go circle back to what you mentioned before in terms of, you know, being a Mexican fighter going for the title in the UFC because it really, it never happens. Kane is the only guy I think that's ever even gone and been in a title shot and, you know, he won. Do you feel, do you feel like you're putting an extra level of pressure on yourself or is it more of an extra excitement? Are you, does this fam, this camp feel even more exciting than other fights because <laughs> it's a big fight and get you in title fight and you know how much it means for, you know, the, the Mexican MMA fans because there's a ton of them out there. Yeah, I mean, brother, right now I have a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of pressure, and every single, every single uh, stuff like this is more pressure on me. But it's fine. It's, it's, I think it's normal. I'm trying to don't think a lot of that stuff because I have a lot of pressure right now. But man. It, I mean, I know Cain Velasquez is, is is a real Mexican, but like, but me, I yeah, born yeah, yeah. there in yeah, Mexico. Yeah, yeah. You know, I born in a third world mm -hmm. country where sometimes the opportunities are really is really hard to take the opportunities. The government, I don't, we don't have a uh, really support from mm -hmm. the government. The big companies uh, don't want to make sponsorships or something like that. So. My my family, uh, um, in all my career, was the the my sponsor. <laughs> you know my <laughs> That's career. That's a good sponsor. So, <laughs> so I I think that makes everything more exciting mm -hmm. for my country because they know the 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 hardest to live in in a third world country like mm -hmm. mexico i mean mexico is a, for me Mex i love mexico i love and it's in an, an special Tij mm -hmm. tijuana uh, where i from where i from i born there it's because you know the habits the people he uh they are really humble really nice people and and i love my 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 country but i know the hard to uh it's really hard to live there. <laughs> the flyweight division has been at a, at a weird position for years now where the promotion does not put a lot of effort into it but still will not close it down. Do you, do you feel like Figueredo beating Benavidez and not getting the title, you know, because he didn't make weight, was it bad for the division? You know, you know, Cejudo didn't want to defend the title. Now the title stays vacated because the man who should have won, you know, didn't make weight. Or do you think in a weird way, maybe the controversy because of that brings more interest to the flyweight division? And maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> actually, actually, yes, I think it's 50-50 <laughs> because we need a champion. Absolutely, we need a, a champion. But all this controversy, the people start to talk about the flyweight division. Yeah. You know, I I saw that weekend when the when the fight is between Joe and, and Figueiredo, and everybody start to talk about that. You know, if Figueiredo doesn't make way, then Joe Benavides uh, need to to won uh, the title for for his legacy and all that stuff. So I think it's 50-50. We need a champion. But the controversy is nice. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I agree. What are your thoughts on this expectation that Benavides and Figueredo will fight again in the next title fight for, for the division? Do you feel that is the right move for the division? Joe getting a fourth chance at the title? No, they've mentioned headbutt and, and all kinds of things. Or do you think everyone should, whoa, 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 wait to see what you do against Formiga or what Formiga does against you. You know, since Formiga is the, the last guy to beat Figueredo, do you think a win over him should make you the logical choice to be the next title contender against him? Man, to be honest, I'll, I'll talk about uh, Joseph Benavides. Always, always is too hard for me because I love Joe. <laughs> yeah. I, I love Joe. Is my coach. I, actually, I never say like Joe. It's always my coach, my coach, my coach. When I talk with him, it's hey coach, <laughs> how, how you been? Yeah. You know. Um, 
I love coach. I love uh, Joe because he was a really good part of my uh, development, like a fighter and like a human mm-hmm. being. I love his philo- his philosophy of the life. Um, I admi- admire too much uh, just Benavides, but I, and I think this is not my business. My business is go to Brasilia and kill uh, uh, Jesse Formiga and make an, an a statement. You know, I can't control that. I I can't control what uh, Dana White said or or what Dana White want to do. So I just. I just need to make an statement that night. Let's say you win, but you know you don't get in consideration for a towel shot. They do the rematch. I don't win, brother. <laughs> yeah. All right. So when you win, <laughs> let's say you don't get the title shot next. They go with the rematch. An obvious fight to make based on rankings, at least, would be between you and a man you mentioned earlier, Alexandre Pantoja. Is a third fight with him something you would be interested in? Not just only for a number one contender spot, but is that something that still bothers you and you feel you need to avenge that? Man, I'm Mexican. <laughs> and, my, and my heart feels so much pain when I'm talking about Alexander Pantoja <laughs> because I know from the bottom of my heart I can beat Alexander just the moments when I fall against him doesn't want the correct moment, you know? The first time was in, in the, the yeah. Ultimate Fighter, I think was too fast. And, you know, it's a, it's a hard competition, the, the Ultimate yeah. Fighter, because you you don't know the guy who who's fighting the next time. So, and the, and the last fight against Alexandre in Chile was hard. My, my, man, my mind was really uh, tired. Because supposedly I I uh, I need to fight against uh, Ray Borg, mm. yeah, yeah. you know, in first in mm. Texas, February. But I I had an injury in my my elbow, so UFC moved the fight to Brooklyn. But then Conor McGregor comes, Charlie Dolly, and mm. you know all that stuff. The camp was really really long, mm. and in the and of all of that, UFC changed the, my opponent. I mean, I have, I had all my my camp from a wrestler for a, mm, for a lot of scrambles, yeah, yeah, yep. you know, for a grappling match. But then uh, UFC put me on a stri- on a striker. Mm. Is that com- yes, you big know, difference. my mind was retired, uh, changed all the plan, and and again. I know from the bottom of my heart I can beat Alexander Pantoja. Just the moment doesn't want the correct moment to fight with him. But I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. glad you brought up being Mexican because it's it's a, it's a key part of you. When you were released from the UFC, you know, back when you only competed in one MMA fight for LFA before eventually getting back into the UFC very quickly, I always wondered as a fan and as a person who always been a fan of your style <laughs> – I wonder if Combate Americas, was that at all a serious consideration at that time since they work hard to promote to Latino fighters, to Latino audience, you know, promote many events in Mexico? Did you ever consider them, ever think about them, or you knew or were told, hey, go out there, win one fight, you'll be back in the UFC right away? No, man, in that moment, my life was really, really hard. Really, really hard because... I, I I needed to take a lot of decision in my life to go forward, to keep going. So, yeah, Combat Americas wasn't an option. But they sent me a, a offer, a not really good mm. offer. I think so. I don't I don't I don't want to say yeah, too yeah. much, but the offer was really good, mm. you know. What do you th- then I, I No, sorry? no, continue, continue. Then I signed with uh, Iridium Sports, Jason House, mm. my, all my team. Jason yeah. uh, and then they uh, gave me the fight in the LFA. Mm. And Jason uh, told about, about that, yeah. you know, like, hey, take this fight. I know it's, it's, it's a high risk because the guy is he's really good. It was uh, Michael Perez and uh, former o- Olympia, Olympian mm-hmm. grappler wrestler sorry so the the fight is hard but if if you win this fight and win really good you can go again uh, really fast to the ufc and 
you know, high risk, high reward, high yeah. benefit. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. What do you think of what, what do you think right. of combate? Uh, like, uh, what do you think of combate? And you know that that they are a, a, a group that pushes a, a Spanish, a lot of Spanish speaking fighters, uh, all different parts, Central, South America, Mexico, Spain, even work with, and, and then to an audience, to a Spanish speaking audience, you know, I, I, you have an appreciation for appreciation for the Latino audience, like just as a, as a fighter in the industry, what do you think of Combate and what they've kind of done and what they've kind of built up? No, I like Combate. I like Combate because they, they make a lot of uh, events in, for example, in Mexico, it's, it's really hard because sometimes uh, those doesn't have uh, Mexico doesn't have a, a events, mm. you know, and the fighters needs to yeah. to yeah. fight to make a, a record to go to the big leagues. So I, I like combate. I like combate. Actually, a lot of my tra uh, training partners uh, okay. fight there, like Jasmine Jauregui, Edgar, Edgar Chaires. Uh, Marcelo Rojo and, and other ones, really good with really good careers there. So I like Combate, obviously. I like Combate because it's a, it's a good opportunity to shine. Now you are only 26, a young man, but at some point, maybe when you know when you hit 30, is there a belief you would want to change your nickname from Assassin Baby, maybe to just Assassin? Because by the time you're 30, you're not you're not a baby anymore. Or would you think about maybe Assassin Man? I like Assassin Man. Would you be Assassin Man? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, two days ago, I, I'm talking with my coach. And they they watch my you know my body is is I th I think I have a lot of a little bit more uh, muscles yeah. <laughs> and they, and, they, and they say something like hey you look you look better Brandon I we need to change your nickname yes. like I don't know maybe uh, assassin teenager <laughs> or something like that and so maybe you never you never know <laughs> now okay you brought up. The, the, the fun codes in the back over there. I'm, I'm a big fun code guy. You are a, a nerd. Now, no, so uh, obviously you collect the fun code stuff like that, but are you like a, a big fan of like nerd movies and TV shows? Did you watch the Marvel movies? Do you have a favorite Marvel movies? Please be nerd with me. <laughs> <laughs> I need to say this. Uh, I'm a nerd of closet. You know, I have a lot of things. I'm, I, I love to collect a lot of, uh, three things. I have a collection of uh, movies, oh, actually. Okay. Uh, actually, I have a, a funny story because the last day I we my wife and me went to uh, Walmart and I buy the the jo the Joker okay. movie, okay. the new. Mm -hmm. And the other day, my wife said, "Hey, you can put the the, the movie and like and I say like why? Because you buy the movie." But I saw the movie in the movie yeah. theater. So why did you buy the, the movie? <laughs> Just because, I do the same thing. You know? I got I got four decks of Blu-rays. I do the same thing. I we're we're brothers here. We're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And um, Funkos, I have like, I have uh, sixty-five. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if you have to do yeah. a list in your in I your a, phone. I have a lot. I have over here too. I have a whole collection over there too. <laughs> <laughs> and. I have two years collect collecting uh, Legos. Oh, wait. So Legos. then I have to ask you, because I watch it. I watch it. My girlfriend watch it with my son. There's a Lego Masters TV show on Fox. Have you seen that show yet? Man, I'm that generation. Right now, I don't have to. Oh. I just watch uh, Netflix. I just watch uh, Amazon, Amazon Prime. So I don't have TV, oh. I, I, but I, I need to watch that that. Uh, Show because it looks really, really good. Do you really have good. Hulu? No, I don't uh, have Hulu. Get, get Hulu. It's on Hulu. It's good? on Hulu. All right. <laughs> Brother, thank, thank you for your advice.